I'd like to now talk to you about the Takamatsu model XC100. This is one of Takamatsu's smaller uh, single spindle, single turret machines. Uh, this particular model here is features an auto loader with in and out feed conveyor. So I kind of want to talk to you about the machine and we'll kind of walk around the machine, we'll go from there. So this particular machine uses uh, basically an A25 spindle has an A25 spindle. This is a collet chuck that you see on here. Um, one of the nice features of all Takamatsu machines is that we have actually, we have air blow at the chuck for managing chips and also coolant at the, at the chuck as well, um, as long as, as well as bed coolant as well. So this is the eight station static turret. This machine is boxway machine. So we'll come out here, let me follow you around here. Uh, control uses a Fanuc control, and this is the uh, Takamatsu uh, loader PLC. It's a very nice pendant style, it's very simple teach mode, um, and it's got a cable on it as you can see, so setup is really nice because you can actually jog the loader down and hit teach, so it's very, very simple to do the, uh, the setup, and the teach mode is very, very simple to do. So with that, I wanna kinda of take you around to the side of the machine. We're walking around here. So this particular machine, I always bring this machine in with high pressure coolant. This is the high pressure coolant pump. It's about 300 PSI and provides volume and pressure. You'll notice these two valves here. Basically, we have uh, M code switching of the high pressure coolant through the spindle, which is ex very important. If you're doing any ID cutting, you wanna be able to push those chips out through the spindle. And I also have high pressure uh, coolant to the turret so you can switch between uh, spindle through and to the turret by M code. Uh, I can feature over here I want to show you as I mentioned it's a boxway machine you can see it's got all FANUC um, axis drives and spindle drive. Um, boxway machine you'll see that motion in a little bit longer but very very rigid it's about a 30 degree slant on that which enables us to manage chips and also it, uh, adds to the rigidity and the compactness of the machine as well. So moving around to the back of the machine, uh, this is the area, so the, the chip conveyor on this machine with the auto loader, uh, the chip conveyor comes out the back side, so basically it comes over here, and then it's kind of a gooseneck and comes over, and you can put your chip bucket over here. So moving around to the other side of the machine. So this is the, uh, this is the material handling on this particular machine, it has an in-feed conveyor, these are your blank parts here, so your in-feed blank parts come uh, on the in-feed conveyor, and then finished parts, as you'll see when we get running the machine, finished parts come uh, on the out-feed conveyor in this direction here, and we've got an out-shoot, so the finished parts would come down here, you can have a little bit of an accumulation table if you want to for finished parts. Uh, for the blank parts, you can either put the parts right onto the in-feed conveyor. You can see these are the adjustable guides. You can see basically just turn these wing nuts and the guides move in and out for the different part diameters. This machine's 60 millimeter part diameter OD, which is about two and a half inches roughly. Part length maybe four inches depending on the work holding. One of the things we like to do on this machine uh, whenever possible, if we can use a bull feeder, we would put the bull feeder out here. Uh, bull feeders are nice, you can put uh, a lot of parts in a bowl and, the, and uh, basically the part would track down through the bowl and feed right onto the in-feed conveyor. So it's a really nice option if you can do that. If you can't, we do also offer the XC100 uh, with a rotary stalker. That'll be in a subsequent video that we have. We have that also in our showroom as well. So what I want to do now is uh, basically I'm going to have the machine uh, run through kind of a step process first so I can explain the loading a little bit further. So you can see over here, basically we've picked up the part off of the Y turn device. So the Y turn device, as you'll see right now, it picks the part up. If your parts are standing up vertically, it'll turn the part horizontally so that the two jaw loader gripper can pick the part up. Now, if your part you want it is long, maybe like a pencil or something, and you want to pick it up, the loader grippers can pick the part up directly off of the infeed conveyor, right off the belt. So we can do it either either fashion. So we're going to come down now, basically jog it down. And as soon as he gets down to the bottom here, I'm going to explain a little bit further here. So is it stopped here? Very good. Okay. 
So this is the loader hand here. You can see there's the loader hand, the loader gripper. So this would be your blank part, which is gonna be going into the chuck. And I don't know if you can see over here, this is a part pusher. We may see it a little bit better in a moment. This is a part pusher. We use a pneumatic cylinder to actually push the part directly against the work stop. And there's a sensor on here so that if the part doesn't get pushed far enough or it gets too far, then it'll fault out the machine. So it really protects us against any kind of misloading function. So I'll step out of the way now. So you can see we're gonna load it into the chuck, push the part in, and then the loader's gonna come back up. So this is in slow motion mode, but it kind of gives you an idea here. So we're gonna come back down now, and we're gonna show you the loading function again. So that's unloading. Now we're gonna load the blank part, and then we're gonna come back up. Now this is very interesting. You're gonna see that we do a pickup and a drop off at the same time. Do you see that? We're picking up a blank, we're dropping off a finished part at the same time. This really goes to system cycle time. The system cycle time is fantastic. You can see also another good point of the machine is that the distance, you'll be able to see in just a moment here, that the distance, and maybe you can, uh, I don't know whether you can stop it just as it goes over to the, uh, to the outfeed conveyor there. So you can see here again where we're doing a pickup and a drop off, we're picking up a blank, we're dropping off a finished part. And one point I really want to emphasize to you uh, that really goes to the, the, the quickness of the overall system cycle time. If you'll see the distance here, it's maybe hard to see in the video, but the distance here between where we pick up and drop off the part to the chuck, I can tell you it's only about four, maybe five inches as far as the travel of the loader. So it really makes for a very, very fast overall system. So now I think what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and turn it into the high speed mode. And so you can see run, basically you have to see it run in its full automation mode. So then we're cutting the parts now, basically see the cutting. Coming down, unload, come in, load, come back out, drop the finished part, pick up a blank, and get ready to load again. So we've got the doors up, open obviously for the video, but um, kind of gives you a good indication. Obviously we close the doors when we do that. So it's a very, very compact, fast, rigid auto loading machine, kind of out of the box factory automation.